Sunshine. Hey guys, I'm Sarah. This is Rue. This is our van that we live in full time. It's been about three months now, and prior to this, we were living in an Airstream for about a year. I decided to kind of kick our travels up a notch and make ourselves a little more portable by living in a van instead of having to tow a trailer, which I don't regret for a second. It's actually been so much easier than traveling in the Airstream. I can park this thing just about anywhere. I don't have to rely on hookups and campgrounds, and it's really just expanded my opportunity for travel by so much. But as amazing as this van is, there's also been a lot of struggles that I've been dealing with, and I feel like that's a reason I haven't posted a video in a little bit, because I've kind of had a creative block. I really enjoy posting <laughs> positive content and I hate to post anything negative because I don't like the kind of feedback that I receive from that but I also want to keep it real with you guys because as awesome as this lifestyle is it's also challenging in some ways. I don't think it would be realistic to only show you guys the good sides of this lifestyle so Today, I'm here to talk about some of the downsides that I've been struggling with recently. Hopefully, you guys can help me kind of come up with some resolutions. Um, I do appreciate your support so much. I know that 99% of my comments are always positive, and I truly love you guys for that. I feel like I have such a big support system, and yeah, hopefully we can come up with some resolutions. I also ran out of coffee yesterday, so let's see how this goes. <laughs> so I think the main reason I feel a bit drained and tired is because I am currently traveling throughout the Northeast. The reason I'm in the Northeast right now is because I picked up my van in Michigan and I decided to visit family that I have in Connecticut and explore the Northeast while I'm here because... I don't know when the next time is that I'll be in this area and I might as well check a few items off my list and explore it while I'm here. That being said, the Northeast isn't very van friendly, which I was already aware of going into it. And it's not to say that there isn't plenty of overnight parking spots for me here. I've been able to find a lot of parking spots that are completely free and I don't pay for any campgrounds. I have not once stayed at a campground. One, because my van is self-sufficient and I don't need hookups and I don't want to be around all of those people. So there's no reason for me to be paying. And I'm also paying enough monthly for my van right now because it's financed. So that's my rule is I don't pay for campgrounds. But all of the places that I have been parking are one night stays, so I have to trek on the next day, find the next spot. I'm driving a lot, I'm traveling a lot, I'm planning a lot, which takes away from my time to focus on my YouTube channel and have a creative outlet and focus on my new remote job that I just started, which is taking up a ton of my time. And everywhere I go, I have to make sure I have good signal, and I can't really set up my Starlink in a parking lot, which is where I feel like I'm spending a lot of my nights, is parking lots, street parking, lots of rest stops, which is actually where I am right now. I try to get creative with it and find the prettiest spot at the rest stop, and I think I did really good with this one. I've also been parking on trailheads and pull-offs and stuff like that, but then you're close to the road and it's not camping in nature like I really want to be. I've also done a lot of driveway camping with family and friends, but when I'm with them, my time is dedicated to spending that time with my family and friends. So therefore, I feel like I have just fallen so far behind on adulting in general and just a big long to-do list of things that I need to get done and also focusing on my new job as well. My favorite places I've stayed on have been Harvest Hosts, where you can stay like on a farm or a winery or brewery, but those are limited to one night. 
and you have to make a purchase, so really you are spending money. But I use the extension off of Harvest Hosts called Boondockers Welcome, where you can stay at people's houses for up to five nights at a time, but then you're in a driveway. And yes, it's nice to be able to stay for more than one night, but I think what I crave is just to be back out west where there is a bunch of dispersed camping, BLM land. I think the kind of camping that I'm really craving and what I envisioned when I got my van was dispersed camping for at least a week at a time out in beautiful locations with nobody else around and instead I'm sleeping in parking lots every night, and this is just not what I had envisioned, but I was well aware of it going to the Northeast that I would be facing this challenge. I know the best resolution would be for me to just head back west and go do the kind of camping that I want to do, but I have to be back in Florida, which is my home base, for a couple months in the winter time. So it wouldn't make sense for me to head all the way back west and then back east. It just doesn't make sense. So I'm kind of biding my time here. And it's not that I don't like it. There's a lot of hiking and climbing and just really beautiful coastal areas as well. And if I stick around for the fall, then I get to hike in all of those beautiful colors. And I don't know when my next opportunity will be to spend fall in the Northeast. Now, the bright side to all of this, like I said, is my van is self-sufficient. I don't have to rely on hookups and I don't have to rely on campgrounds. So I can't even imagine having <laughs> to travel with my Airstream throughout the Northeast. I would be spending so much money on campgrounds because... Not only would I be relying on hookups, but the campgrounds out here can go into the 70s. It's really expensive and it's not feasible for full-time living. I have found a couple campsites in New York that are somewhat dispersed camping. They are numbered sites and typically there's only less than 10 at each place you go to. And since it's the summertime, most of them are taken when I get there, and even if I do get one, I can only camp there for a maximum of three nights without obtaining a permit. So it's not that easy. <laughs> I'm really not trying to rag on the Northeast. I do like it up here. It's just not the most accessible for van life, but it's still possible. I have gone to some amazing places. In my next video, I'll talk about the time that I spent in the Adirondack Mountains and the Catskill Mountains. I also spent a lot of time in Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Cape Cod, and I visited a friend in Burlington, Vermont. Now I'm back in Michigan getting my van ready for the show that we're about to do in Topsfield, Massachusetts. That will be July 29th and 30th if anybody wants to attend. It's called the Adventure Van Expo, and you can come check out my van and meet me and some other team members from Drifter Vans. Another thing I've been struggling a little bit with is adjusting to working a remote job while traveling. That is something I never did before. I am a travel radiology tech, so I'm used to taking three-month contracts wherever I go, and I kind of just go to work, leave it at the door, and then go home. But now my home is also my workspace and my vehicle, and it's kind of hard to coordinate meetings and consultations and phone calls around my travels when I'm moving around so much. It's not hard to pull off on the side of the road and hop on a Zoom call. It's more difficult to make sure I have the appropriate signal. And if I have to set up my Starlink, I need to find an appropriate area to set it up. I won't set it up in a public parking lot. Sometimes I will do it at parks, but I feel like it's such an eyesore and then there's people walking by and I'm afraid that 
something will happen to it. So it kind of makes me a little anxious when I have to do that. And I also have to allow about 15 to 30 minutes for it to boot up and get good signal. Other than that, the job has been going really well. It's more so just finding a balance between work and life because now that I work remote, I can kind of overwork myself because sometimes I catch myself at 11 o'clock at night answering emails and doing work-related things when really I just need to find some me time to not only step away from my job, but also focus on my creative outlet, which is creating videos. So I'm not the only one who's been struggling. <laughs> Rue has been struggling too. And this is a hard topic for me to share because I feel like a lot of people are very judgmental when it comes to me taking care of my dog and living in an RV with her, but I really do everything in my power to keep her as comfortable and happy as possible. I had an air conditioner installed in here, I have windows that open, I have fans, I sometimes play music for her, I, <laughs> I give her calming treats every day, I exercise her, I take her on hikes, I try to keep her as happy as I can, but I think she hates the van. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like it right now because I'm in the van with her. But as far as leaving her alone in here, she is not having it. At the beginning, when we first moved into the van, I was able to leave her in here to at least go grocery shopping or go into a climbing gym or just errands and adulting in general. But now it seems that I can't leave her alone for five to 10 minutes to run into the grocery store without her freaking out. And I don't know what the big difference is between her living in an Airstream versus our van because she did fabulous in the Airstream. She would just chill in there. It was our consistent home that she was comfortable with. And I thought this would be even cozier. And I, I just, I don't know why she hates it so much. But I think the separation anxiety is, it's real. And it's, it's bad. She has destroyed a couple things. <laughs> There was one day I came back to the van and she was in the front cab and I was showing someone the van at the time and was like, I don't know how my dog got in the front. And I walk into the van. She had chewed through the bug screen and the pocket door and somehow shifted it open a little bit and squeezed through there. That is a day that I failed to lock the door. <laughs> so... She is a smart dog. She's definitely a husky. And her true husky colors are really starting to show. <laughs> um, I'm laughing about it because I don't know what else to do at this point. So I started keeping her in the den. My dad and I created a gate to keep in front of the den to keep her in there. I figured without her being able to look out the window and see the constantly changing environment, maybe that would calm her down a little bit. Dogs are denning animals. That is something a dog trainer told me is crate training is a great solution for separation anxiety. This was back in her puppy days when she used to be crate trained. So now we are going back to the puppy days and crate training. But she ended up destroying the dog den. She destroyed her bed. She ripped the carpet off the walls. She chewed the gate that we created so much to the point where it started getting rusty, which was extremely concerning. So I decided to get a metal dog crate to go in her den instead. I was afraid that she might get into the electrical or the plumbing or hurt herself by doing that. And it's it's very concerning. So luckily the dog den is the perfect size to fit a large dog crate in there. The only thing I couldn't figure out is how to swing the door in and out because of the way that it's set up. 
but I took it to my dad in Connecticut and I am so, so thankful for him because he is so handy and creative. He actually flipped the crate so that the doors swing in now and I can still access my power hub from one side and all of the storage. He even created a hole in the side of the crate for her to still access her water. And then the guys at Drifter Vans created a different door for my power hub, so I am still able to access that as well. I also started Rue on an anti-anxiety medication. I really didn't want to have to do that. It was a last resort, but that is what her vet recommended. So she has been on it for about six days now, and I'm hoping that we will start to see a change soon. Not that I want to have a medicated dog, I love her to pieces, and I only want her to be happy. I'm not going to lie, I have not really left her in there for a period longer than five minutes yet, because I am scared. I want to keep it a happy place, and I'm doing everything I can to do it in small increments, but I have to go back to hospital work soon. So... Either this is going to start working or it's not, and when I do take a contract, I'm just going to have to find a dog sitter for her. I am hoping to take a contract that is three days a week, so that way I still have my four days off with her to go adventure and hike and do whatever else, but the best solution I can think of right now is just to go take a contract, settle down somewhere for a little bit, kind of just reground myself, get a sitter for Rue, let her wind down a little bit, and see what happens. <laughs> That's life though. Honestly, it ebbs and it flows, and we all go through rough patches, no matter what type of living situation we're in. So hopefully that's all this is for me and Rue right now. I know things will get better eventually, and if not, then we will reevaluate the plan and go from there. We are here now, so we are going to make it work, and we're going to make the most out of it. So if you guys have any recommendations or questions, let me know in the comments below. I would love to have a discussion with you guys. Or you can email me directly if you want to have a personal conversation at contact at nomadicsarah.com. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Stay tuned. The next video will be more positive. I promise I am going to go over all of the adventures I've been on so far. So don't forget to subscribe if you guys want to see more videos about me living in my van and adventuring through the Northeast. Eventually, I will be in many other parts of the country. Thank you so, so much for your support, and I will see you guys next time.